you think within 50 years, they'll probably be much better? 100%. Okay. Yeah, I, I, th I think we'll have synthetic muscles that are that outperform biological muscle. This is Climbing Gold. Where does that technology stand now? I mean, you know, you've talked a little bit about the full integration of the prosthetic with, you know, that actually feeling like sensing the limb. But, you know, is that is that commercially available? Is that like normal? Like what's the what's the kind of average experience for, for a prosthetic nowadays? If you you happen to be born um, in a in a wealthy nation, you know, Western Europe, US, Australia, and so on, and in a middle class to upper class family then you can pretty much get any prosthesis that money can buy. Sadly, in many areas of the world, um, people are not able to have access to prostheses. Um, we're working in Sierra Leone, Africa, for example, and less than 1% of people with major limb loss have access to a prosthesis. And that, that less than 1%, the prostheses have parts that are 20 to 30 years old. The limb is basically falling apart, but you know, with with very good in medical insurance coverage, yeah, one can today get these computer controlled limbs running algorithms that um, that work fairly well. I don't know how to frame this question exactly, but how close are those limbs to just being better than than a biological limb? Because I presume that that at this point it's still annoying to have a prosthetic like it probably still uncomfortable or you know doesn't totally match up with the biological body that well or whatever but or is that is that the case i mean like at what point it will the, the synthetic limbs be better yeah we're, we're not that close um what, what's amazing about the human body is its versatility so alex you're you're an extraordinary climber um you are you know, I can put you in an ocean and you'll swim. You can run. Like, if you really look at the human being as an animal, we're we're extraordinary athletes in our versatility. Like, we can do a lot of different terrains pretty damn well. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a dog can't climb like Alex Honnold, not even close. Right? It's 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 amazing what the human can do in terms of versatility. So artificial artificial body parts. Um, are are not versatile at all. So you can you can build a limb with for, with a specific task in mind, like climbing a crack, but it won't it won't be versatile. It won't be good for anything else. Mm -hmm. You can build a limb that has like built-in trampoline springs <laughs> that you can yep. jump high, but it won't be good for anything else. Or I'm thinking of uh, the running blades that you see like in track athletes and right. things now. Where like they can run really fast and it looks amazing, but you definitely couldn't crack climb with one of the crazy spring running leg things. Yeah, and you can't even stand without constantly stepping because you're on two points. You can't balance. Hmm. You're, so you're constantly uh, falling forward at a high rate of speed. It's like full running. Exactly. You're exactly. Just, yeah, you're just in a sprint at all times. Yeah. So the cutting edge of the field is linking electromechanics to the brain because the brain knows exactly how to control the electromechanics to get that versatility, to run, climb, and do all these things. So that's what we're doing right now at MIT, um, achieving that brain connection so that a person with limb loss can, can do all activities with a single limb. Hmm. And, and how far off do you think that is? Yeah, I, I, think, I think in two decades, we will have examples in laboratories of bionic limbs that uh, are basically equivalent to their biological counterparts. Hmm. Which so you is think within, very exciting. And so you you think within 50 years they'll probably be much better? 100%. Okay. Yeah, I I, th I think we'll have synthetic muscles that are that outperform biological muscle. Um hmm. which is which is interesting because in that era um you'll actually be a better athlete if your limb is bionic than if it's the tissues that you were born with. Yeah, that raises an interesting point that sport is often a really powerful platform for, well, really just for spectators, for people like learning about new things. I guess the question is, 
do you think that sport is a good way for these technologies to sort of enter the mainstream? I do. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's, you know, my, yeah, I would say sports and arts. Um, like I dance. think one, of, yeah, exactly. I think one of the most extraordinary demonstrations of human physicality is ballet. Um, in upper extremity, it's playing, you know, uh, these really difficult piano pieces um, where you can't even see the fingers moving. They're moving so quickly. So I actually have the, the, uh, the research goal to build a bionic leg and a bionic arm that will enable ballet and um, a person to play a Beethoven piano piece at normal speeds as if the, them were, were made of flesh and bone. Are, are there bionic fingers? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, like, there's, do people use prosthetic fingers? Absolutely. Yeah, there's, oh. there's actually a lot of companies that are now coming out uh, with all kinds of bionic hand appendages. I'm but, sure the, the, but, the, but the robotics are far more advanced than the, when the, than the skeletal and nerve interface. So the, the shift in clinical care is going to occur, I think, very soon. And it'll be related to um, direct nerve and muscle interfaces to, to, the, uh, to the motorized hands and wrists. Yeah, can you explain that? The, the fact that how a limb is amputated directly affects how it can eventually be connected to a, to a synthetic limb? Sure. Uh, so Alex, when you, <clears throat> when you close your eyes and move your elbow, you can feel its position. You can feel how fast it's moving. If I hand you a barbell, you can feel that extra load. So that's called muscle tendon proprioception. So we've actually have a bionic limb where we can emulate those natural percepts. And what we do is when the limb's amputated, we, we surgically connect um, the agnus and tagnus muscles as if the limb were still there. So instead of a muscle flexor extensor moving, going, going past a joint and moving a distal joint member, we, we connect them um, within the amputated residuum. So when a person thinks and moves their phantom limb, these, these muscles that we pair in, the, in surgery are actually dynamically moving. And muscles have biological mechanoreceptors. Um, they have these biological sensors that send the brain information about muscle length, speed, and force. So when these muscles are moving in the amputated residuum, um, the person can actually feel a natural range of motion of their phantom limb. So even though the limb has been amputated away, they feel as though the, the limb is there and can, they can move it dynamically. So then we attach a bionic limb to that residuum and we control from those muscles directly to the motors of the synthetic limb. So the person thinks and they move their either hand or the robotic foot and they look down and the, they see the robotic appendage moving and they actually feel that movement. Just like when you close your eyes and move your elbow, you feel that movement. So we're basically coupling the visual system with proprioception as well as skin touch, all these sensing modalities uh, to, create, to create the experience for the person with limb loss that their limb is actually rebuilt and even though it's made of titanium and silicone and carbon and all these synthetic materials, it's actually part of the body.